everything that exists is made up of the lower levels of existence. Thus, crystalline rocks consist of molecules, themselves composed of atoms. Next come the particles. This is the constitutive principle of Romani. It does not stop there. Particles are inevitably made of what is existing below particles. So that what is existing in the fields emanating from matter shall, in one way or another, enter into the composition of matter. This suggests that gravitational fields consist of small particles, the particles of space, which constitute matter and generate what seems to be an attraction between bodies. Space is filled from the confines of the universe to the inside of the atoms by the particles of space. The first consequence of these assumptions is that these particles of space stir in all directions to form a kind of fluid. They are the medium of the space. The second is that they propagate waves as in all fluids. Matter is virtually empty. For the particles of space, it's not even a strainer. The nuclei occupy only the hundred thousandth part of the atoms. However, currents that could occur in the medium of space would cause a drag on the nuclei of atoms. For simplification, the frictions in the medium of space are neglected. It is a perfect fluid and thus without drag. This is the d'Alembert's paradox. But this medium wears waves. It is also an ideal gas. There is a pressure drag in ideal gases. Indeed, the speed of the nuclei of atoms in the medium of space is added to the stirring speed of the particles of space on the front surface of the nuclei of atoms and is subtracted in the back. There is therefore pressure on the front side and depression of the back side, to be added since they concern the opposed surfaces of the nuclei of atoms. In order that such currents may cause motion of the body toward each other, they must, obviously, head towards matter. The nuclei of atoms, and therefore probably the elementary particles, so must absorb, or rather condense the particles of space. The medium of space is animated by flows head towards the nuclei of atoms, towards matter. The flow of condensation of the medium of space is proportional to the outer surface of the nuclei of atoms. To be proportional to their mass, it is sufficient that the nuclei of atoms are bubbles and not solid balls. It should also be that the thickness of these bubbles is the same for all atoms. This is not exactly the case. The thickness varies very slightly. This explains the mass defect whose order of magnitude is 10 to the minus 24 gram. It is also the order of magnitude of the difference between the inert mass and the heavy mass. But the law of flows is mathematical. If the medium of the space is not compressible, then the particle's velocity of the space in the flow is inversely proportional to the square of their distance to the body where they condense. The pressure drag of the medium of space on the nuclei of atoms is therefore inversely proportional to the square of the distance. The drag which has just been mentioned, is proportional to the apparent surface of the nuclei of atoms. The total surface of a bubble is proportional to the square of its radius and thus to its apparent surface. But then, as the nucleus mass is proportional to its outer surface, the drag of a condensing flow of the medium of the space on the nucleus is de facto proportional to their mass and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. This is exactly the Newton's law. But things get complicated, because the drag that was mentioned also occurs when the nuclei move in the medium of the space. The planets would collapse on the sun. Hamilton's principle saves the day. The flow of a perfect fluid towards a well is not stable. It rotates. The principle of Hamilton can even determine the form of the world that forms inevitably. This is what is evident in water and in the air, but also apply the medium of the space. Stars are surrounded by whirls. This brings us to Descartes obviously. But here the whirls have a cause. The condensation of the medium of the space and the matter. The whirl of the sun drives the planets. The tangential velocity of this whirl must therefore be proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance to the sun. 
Unfortunately these whirls in perfect fluid have a tangential velocity proportional to the inverse of the distance to the center of the well. This result is derived from the Lagrange equation. This is energy. But then there is a solution. If the particles of the medium of the space are animated not only of a linear Brownian motion, but also of an angular kinetic moment, then the equipartition principle doubles exactly the term of the energy in the Lagrange equation whose solution is then exactly a tangential speed proportional to the inverse of the square root of the distance to the center of the well. It is exactly the law of the tangential velocity of the body which revolved around the sun on the circular trajectories. The trajectories of planets, asteroids and comets are elliptical. The speed differences with the medium of the space causes a pressure drag as we have seen. This explains the anomalies of their movement. The medium of the space has a pressure as all fluids. This pressure acts on the nucleus of atoms and maintains its cohesion. It can be likened to an ideal gas. A particle moving in the medium of space is subjected to a pressure drag. Its lifetime is extended if it is unstable. An atom that moves very rapidly in the medium of the space is flattened and therefore has a wavelength modified in addition to the Doppler effect. The electrons cannot rotate around the nuclei of atoms without their drag in the medium of space dropping them. In fact, electrons perform quantum jumps above the nucleus of atoms. After the ejection of an electron, the nucleus can eject another electron, only with a different energy, its mass having changed. This explains the Pauli's principle of exclusion. The particles of space condense in the nuclei of atoms. Atomic nuclei grow with time. Observed at galactic distances, they must appear to us with a shifted spectrum. There is no need to assume that galaxies move away from us to explain the Hubble effect. There is no Big Bang. Planets expand gradually due to the expansion of the nuclei of atoms, but the Earth has a higher density at the center than at the surface. The central part is expanding faster and the surface distend. It distends mainly in the less dense area, at the bottom of oceans. Additionally, there are regularly magmatic eruptions lowering the internal pressure of the Earth. This explains volcanoes, earthquakes and major mountain ranges that have arisen from the ancient seafloor. This is the current speed of the medium of the space. The motion of the stars themselves is obtained by applying the Newton's law. The planets have no drag in their rotation around the sun because the medium of the space rotates together. The whirls are the stable form of flow towards a well under the principle of Hamilton. If the condensation of the medium of the space in the matter has a spherical symmetry, the whirls have an axial symmetry. According to Poincaré's theorem, the whirl is concentrated in the plane that is the main plane of galaxies and the equatorial plane of stars and planets. On each side of the equatorial whirl, the medium of the space condenses also so that inverse whirls should appear and so on to the poles. These whirls are separated by swirling cones giving areas alternating zones with inverse rotations. This is what explains the zonal appearance of planets. The gases which surround the planets are dragged in rotation by the medium of the space. This is the case for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The zones formed by these gases themselves cause small vortices of gas by friction at their interfaces as seen at the poles of Jupiter. Ocean currents of the Earth also have a distinctly zonal aspect. The phenomenon is also indisputable for terrestrial winds even if it is less clear. The rotation of the Sun around itself is essentially zonal. Moreover, the low inclination of the trajectories of comets reported to the equatorial plane of the Sun have a distinctly zonal distribution. In perfect fluid, the rotation of the fluid in the whirl compensates exactly the rotation around themselves of the fluid particles. This flow is irrotational. This is not the case in the medium of the space. The energy term is doubled. The whirl rotation requires an input of angular momentum. 
it can only come from the angular kinetic energy of particles of space. The rotation of the whirl absorbs a part of the angular kinetic energy of the particles of space. So that, for example, near the Sun where the rotational speed is very high, the law of tangential velocities is no longer exactly the inverse of the square root of the distance. A similar phenomenon occurs in galaxies that do not comply with this law. Their size leads to a significant decrease of the angular kinetic energy available in approaching their eye. The flow of the medium of space in the plane of the galaxy thus occurs without kinetic moment as for the perfect fluids. The tangential speed changes from 1 on square root of r to 1 on r as by the red curve. It varies very little over a long distance. There is no need for dark matter. Unlike corpuscles, waves in the media can be divided into two wave trains and interfere. We also get interference with electrons, carbon-60 molecules and even with large organic molecules. Unlike waves produced there in water, the electrons and molecules move at very low speeds compared to the speed of light. As a result, the waves they form moving in the medium of space precede them. These waves interfere and cause a distribution of these elements in the space after the slots. High pressure areas push electrons, atoms or molecules towards low pressures. These areas remain aligned in the direction of the bands that formed in the receiving device. There is no need of presence probabilities. If in viscous fluids, waves propagate in scattering, it does not hold true in a medium consisting of simple shape particles. The dispersion of waves and fluids derived from the complex shape of the molecules. In the air the sound is already much more directional. With a bullhorn sound waves are concentrated. In the medium of the space, the vibration of an electron causes two symmetrical wave trains whose cross-sectional area remain constant over great distances if the particles of the medium are very regular spheres. Under these conditions, they do not drag their neighbors. Such wave trains can therefore have effects similar to a particle. This is the case of the photoelectric effect. The angular momentum of the particles of space has an interesting consequence. Upon impact of two of these particles, momentum is transmitted according to the laws of Descartes. This transmission occurs by elastic deformation of the particles of space. The elastic deformation of the particles of space prevents slippage of the particles on one another as a result of the flattening of the parts in contact. During the oscillations of the electrons, they transmit not only their linear momentum to the particles of space, but also their angular momentum. The angular momentum can only be transmitted transversely. This feature explains the transverse properties of light. Each wave train is polarized in the direction of the angular momentum of electron emitters. The Orsay experiment, also called Aspects experiment, is therefore unproblematic. The polarization state is of course the same for the two symmetrical wave trains emitted by electrons. There is no need of quantum entanglement. Such a polarization is the case of the blue of the sky in the direction opposite the sun and the double polarization of the K layer of the sun observed with this diaphragm instrumented tube. The Earth is dragged by the whirl of the Sun. It therefore has no motion relative to the medium of the space in rotation around the Sun. The light is carried by this same medium. The Michelson experiment therefore cannot highlight the motion of the Earth around the Sun, it uses the light itself driven by the whirl of the Sun. Professor Allais analyzed the Miller's measures with the Michelson interferometer. He has shown they are correlated to the respective positions of the Earth, the Sun and the Moon. Miller actually measured the speeds of the condensation flow of the Sun at 6 hours and 18 hours when the Sun was in the plane of the device.
The variations of the speed of the interferometer with respect to the ether also result from the currents of the ether due to its condensation in the moon, to its rotation around the earth and to its position relative to the sun as its trajectory is not perfectly circular. A Michelson interferometer, placed in weightlessness in a satellite, could map the velocities of the medium of space flows and thus confirm both the theory of vortices and the statistics of Professor Olay. Conversely, in the Sagnike experiment, the disk carrying the mirror rotates relative to the medium of the space and the rotation can be detected. This is the principle of laser gyros. They are installed in all planes. No explanation of Sagnac's experiment by general relativity has been found to date. However, the special relativity theory is an approximation of general relativity when fields are very low. Special relativity should be able to explain the Sagnac experiment for very low speeds. Gyrolizers are able to detect rotation as weak as an hundredth of degree per hour. However, the special relativity theory is used to explain the Michelson experiment. The Earth orbits the Sun at a speed of 1 24th of a degree per hour, and therefore at a speed of rotation four times faster than the detectable by the gyrolizers. But Professor Sellerai demonstrated that the special relativity theory cannot explain the Sagnac experiment. The speed of light is the quadratic mean of the particle of space velocities. The speed of light is not absolute. There is no absolute in the experimental world. The speed of condensation of the medium of the space is always much lower than the speed of light. This axial speed cannot be the cause of the black holes. When the rotation of the vortex is fast enough, a hole appears in water at the center of the well. This is a result of the surface pressure drop associated to the increase of the rotation speed. This is a direct implementation of the Bernoulli's equation. This is also the case in the atmosphere, but there cannot be a hole without air. The central part of the vortex is only free of clouds, free of water drops. This is very clearly shown from spatial photos. And at the center of the galactic vortex a hole may appear if the roration speed of the vortex is large enough. This hole is not free of ether exactly like the vortex in the atmosphere is not free of air. The hole of galaxies is free of matter, free of atoms so that it appears to be black because there is no emission of light when there are no atoms. This is the black hole. The result is that it could happen that a galaxy located far away beyond the black hole could be observed within the black hole. The so-called gravitational waves are waves in the medium of space. Like all waves of space they propagate at the speed of light. The gravitational waves are emitted by the motions of stars at extremely low frequencies ranging from 30 to 300 Hz along with light waves that exceed 10 to the 14 Hz frequencies. Finally, the deflection of light by the Sun is a remarkable fact that Descartes had expected there are almost 400 years. The whirlwind effect of Descartes is added to the action of the condensation flux of the medium of space in the Sun. Some phenomena related to light and gravity are explained in a quite elementary way, by the medium of space and the particles of space that compose it. But the mystery remains for the electric and magnetic fields. In the same way, all the problems related to particles remain unresolved. Moreover, it remains to explain the multiple consequences of this new approach. How is the pressure of the medium of space maintained? How far does the medium of space extend? What are the particles of the medium of space composed of? The myth of Sisyphus applies perfectly to epistemology. Everything has always to be redone.